Check this out, guys. Fort Frederick, PE. So the fort is located along Belmont Terrace Central. Tucked away at the lower end of Fort Street. Welcome to the entrance, guys. There are three blocks at the entrance. A Afrikaans one, a Corsa one, and an English one on the right hand side. This fort was built at the end of 1799 during war with France as a permanent military base overlooking the only safe anchorage on the southeast coast. Although garrisoned until 1862, no shot was fired in anger from its walls. So troops were formally stationed here for 63 years and there was never a need to even fire one cannonball. Okay, let's make our way down to the fort. The fort was built to serve as protection against possible landing of French troops. The walls are about 24 meters long and 2.7 meters high at the entrance. Okay, so this is the entrance gate to the fort. This photo was taken shortly after Fort Frederick was proclaimed a national monument in 1936. The plaque at the entrance is a bit hard to read with this blue coating. It's probably some kind of a treatment to slow down the corrosion. Let's see if we can get something clear off the net. Aha! Uh -huh. Fort Frederick, 1799 to 1868. First permanent military outpost in the eastern province. Established in 1799 and named after the Duke of York. From this fort, the commandant, Captain Francis Evatt, superintended the landing of the 1820 settlers. Not sure if I pronounced his name correctly. As you enter, the building directly in front of you is the blockhouse. Here's a photo of the blockhouse from around 1936. Let's have a look around. That's the powder magazine over there. Either way, this is the oldest surviving British fortification building in the Eastern Cape. So you enter into the first guard room, which has a holding cell on the right hand side. It then leads into the second guard room with another holding cell on the right hand side. Check the timber lintels out. Solid. There was a timber structure above this which served as a barrack. Heading towards the powder magazine. There's a vaulted ceiling inside. This little building was capable of holding about 50 barrels of gunpowder which is about 2,000 pounds. Check out this postcard from the late 1800s. View over the Barkins River and now looking towards South End. Let's 
Let's do a walk around the block house. There's a narrow passageway between the retaining structure and the block house. I see this timber window frame is still intact. That's one of the cells over there. Back through the narrow passageway. Check this photo of the entrance gate. There's a British soldier standing there. This was before the restoration. You can see how overgrown it is around the powder magazine. And of course this is after the restoration. Let's check out the cannons. The fort was originally defended by two 8 pounder guns and one 5.5 inch howitzer. You'll find muzzle loaders mounted on each corner of the fort. These are not the original guns, but they are from the later part of the 18th century. Loading and firing these cannons was like a three-man job. Let's see if we can get a better shot inside this one. That's the captain's grave on the northern wall side. I'm still a bit confused. Check this plan record of the blockhouse. It shows an open plan building with a little staircase or ladder leading up to the timber structure above. Not sure if it was constructed like this at first and the walls introduced later on. Check the view out to the harbour. Here you can see the Barkins river mouth and the relationship it had with the harbour. This photo is from the year 1865. You can see the bridge over the Barkins and Fort Frederick on the hilltop in the background. Let's head around to the grave of Captain Francis Yvette. Captain Yvette was the commander of Fort Frederick from 1817 right until his death in 1850. He was referred to as the father of Port Elizabeth because of the role he played in the town's early development. He was the one to oversee the landing of the British settlers in 1820. He also laid the foundation stone of St. Mary's Church in 1825. He passed away on the 21st of March 1850 and was given a military funeral at the cemetery in Russell Road. His remains were moved to this spot in 1956. The gravestone you saw there is actually a replica. The original one was placed in St. Mary's Cathedral. You can't really get a sense of the scale of the building from this video. Weeple. Guys, there's a lot more information you can get on the Fort Frederick. Just check out the links in my description. Please subscribe, guys. I'm out.